What do we understand when we say food? There are proteins, carbohydrates, sugars, lipids or fats in the foods we eat. Our bodies need enzymes to internalize them and use them. Enzymes are also substances in protein structure. Proteins are made up of chains of amino acids. Coenzymes are needed for enzymes to function. So we can think like a pilot and a co-pilot. What we call coenzymes are micronutrients made up of vitamins and minerals. For this, we have to buy vitamins and minerals from outside. Otherwise, enzymes cannot function without vitamins and minerals. When enzymes fail to function, our body cannot process proteins, carbohydrates and fats. What if it can't work? Our body cannot produce energy. Children's growth and development is interrupted. We cannot conduct our daily activities as we wish. In this nutritional cycle, carbohydrates can turn into fats. Small amounts of fat can turn into carbohydrates. However, it cannot be derived from proteins, carbohydrates or fats. We need to get enough of the proteins from the absolute and absolute outside. Likewise, our body cannot synthesize vitamins and minerals by itself. In other words, the body cannot synthesize vitamins and minerals from carbohydrates or fat. That's why we need to buy vitamins and minerals from outside. Now, because the body cannot synthesize proteins from another substance on its own, the most important building blocks here are that we take protein in our foods. When we say protein, we need to eat rich in amino acid chains, that is, amino acids. Apart from that, we need to get enough vitamins and minerals. Are there enough vitamins and minerals and proteins, namely amino acids, in our normal foods now? After the 1950s, as long as we live in industrialized urban societies, we cannot get the desired amount of amino acids, vitamins and minerals in our routine diet. Feeding greenhouse-grown fruits and vegetables, meat from livestock in normal farms, fish produced in farms, fish grown in fish farms, meat from animals suffering from environmental pollution cannot ensure that we get enough amino acids, vitamins and minerals. Therefore, in urbanized societies, there are very common vitamin, mineral and amino acid deficiencies. No statistical work is very common in Turkey but, in 1992, Austrian scientists have made a joint work with Tubatak. He investigated the vitamin and mineral deficiencies in 960 healthy children, aged 7 to 17 in the Marmara region. The results were extremely dramatic. For example, vitamin A deficiency was detected around 12%. Vitamin E deficiency was detected in 22%. The deficiencies of the B-complex vitamins were detected at 80% and almost 90%. Likewise, in trace element or mineral deficiencies, zinc levels were detected at 16%, and iron deficiency was also detected around 20%. The rates here are not those, derived from sick children. These are deficiency rates from 960 healthy children. Also, if this study had been conducted in diseased or low socioeconomic provinces or regions, the result could have been worse. Apart from this, in the statistics made in America, vitamin D deficiency has been detected in 40% of the society. Vitamin A deficiency in preschool children and pregnant women is around 20% in European countries and Eastern Mediterranean countries. This shows that, under normal conditions, the vitamin and mineral ratios we get from vegetables, fruits and meat or fish are not enough to prevent vitamin and mineral deficiency in the society. This means that, we need to get vitamin and mineral supplements from outside. The point is, what are the most common vitamin and mineral deficiencies? 
The most important vitamin and mineral deficiencies announced by the World Health Organization are vitamin D, vitamin A, iron and iodine among the minerals. We should be getting these. These are very serious public health problems. However, research conducted in Turkey in the preschool children, in blood samples obtained from healthy children, about 30% up to a ratio determined in the case of vitamin A deficiency. The high rates, we mentioned are not samples obtained from sick people, but there is a vitamin A deficiency of up to 30% in healthy individuals. Vitamin D deficiency is also detected in preschool children up to 40%. Therefore, from birth, the use of vitamin D supplements is already considered mandatory. But in addition to this, vitamins such as vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E are absolutely external to us. There is another point to be considered here, and that is vitamins and minerals function together in a metabolic network. That is, a vitamin cannot function, or does not function adequately without another vitamin or mineral. In other words, selenium must be taken together with iodine. We need to take chromium along with B-complex vitamins. In addition to vitamin D, we need to take vitamin K1 and take the trace element manganese. They function as a metabolic network that works together. So if we think of them as a chain, each of them can be treated as a ring of a chain. If there is a weakness in one of the rings, that chain becomes completely dysfunctional. Therefore, we need to introduce multivitamin and multimineral nutritional supplements into our lives. Apart from that, since we live in industrialized urban societies, there are also important differences in the type of fat we normally take in our routine diet. Omega ratios in the food and beverages we ate 50 years ago, today's food, and especially the omega-3 ratios in the food we eat in industrial societies are very low. Because, we cannot eat natural animals. We definitely consume animals, or fish or chickens raised in private fattening farms. The omega-3 ratio, we get from these is very low. In our body, omega-3 and omega-6 must be in a certain balance, in order for our normal cells to function. If omega-3 falls below omega-6, our cells cannot function properly. What does it mean? Our brains cannot work enough, our sleep patterns are not good, we become susceptible to depression and stress. Our immunity cannot function adequately, we become susceptible to diseases. Therefore, we need to take omega-3 supplements to bring the omega-3 omega-6 ratio to a sufficient level. The omega ratio in the fish we buy from outside cannot guarantee that we get enough omega. Or we eat fish that are contaminated with heavy metals in some of the fish we buy. These in turn bring an additional oxidation burden to our body, which can put us in an extra immune vulnerability. In this respect, we cannot eat enough fish anyway, when the omega-3 ratio in the fish we eat is low, and when it is contaminated with heavy metals, we cannot get enough omega-3 and the omega-3 we receive is not of sufficient quality. To summarize, as long as we live in urbanized societies, first of all, we need to eat rich in protein. So, we need to consume foods with amino acid content. Because our body cannot produce them on its own. Second, we need to buy vitamins and minerals, which we call coenzyme, in a multiple network. In other words, we need to take it in the form of multivitamin multimineral complexes. Apart from that, we need to use products containing omega-3. If the omega-3 balance in our body decreases, and shifts in favor of omega-6, we become susceptible to many diseases. Especially the increase in psychiatric problems, widespread sleep problems, 
feeling overly tired, being vulnerable to frequent infections, getting sick from all kinds of viruses, and experiencing complaints such as flu and flu is one of the main reasons that we have enough of these vitamins, minerals, omega-3 and proteins. It is due to the fact that, we take the required proportions. For this reason, we absolutely need to buy products containing amino acids, multivitamins, products containing multi-minerals, products containing omega-3 in the form of nutritional supplements, as in the developed countries in the West. In this way, our resistance to diseases will increase. We will be able to feel better mentally and spiritually. Our sleep quality will improve, and we will become more resistant to stress. In particular, the growth and development of our children will be healthier, and healthier individuals will be raised. We will be able to guarantee that individuals with better physical health, mental health, and mental health will be raised. For this reason, I believe that we should make extensive efforts to support the use of nutritional supplements, which are very common in developed Western societies, in our country, and to use them first by ourselves and then by our relatives and friends. Because, individuals in our own country resist using food supplements, from our children to the old age. Generally, we are a society that is interested in drug consumption. However, I think we should familiarize ourselves with the idea of using nutritional supplements before we get sick. Therefore, this is a community consciousness, this is a culture. For this, we have to act in encouragement in our society.